Hi, this is Nancy LT Hamilton, and today we're going to be doing a video on making enameled camichons, um, which will lead to maybe another video on how to set them. So uh, today we're just going to talk about the enameling part, and we're going to be using our my new Pepe uh, combination disc cutter that I just got um, to make our base for the cabochon. So let's get started. That was a cat. Sorry. Metal. So I'm going to be using copper for this um, video, 20 gauge I believe. Um, you can use silver, fine silver, sterling silver, gold. Um, I'll have more information on what metals to use on my website. Enamels. There are many different kinds of enamels and we are going to be working with medium expansion enamels today. Enamels um, very briefly come in three different forms. They're soft, medium, and hard, and that refers to their firing abilities. Uh, soft being a really um, quick to melt metal, or quick to, that's not the right word, but it'll work for now. So um, I'm going to start, and we're going to use our new Pepe um, disc cutter to make the, start making on the, make the cabochon. So we're going to get involved in that now. So now we're going to take our 20 gauge metal and we're going to make a disc. Um, here's my 20 gauge copper. With the Pepe Tools combination cutter that comes with a 95A, I think, thermometer uh, uh, thingy, plasticky thingy that I can't remember the name of. Uh, urethane. And um, so you want to put that under. It helps deaden the noise and protects from some vibration but this is still pretty noisy especially with 20 gauge um, the this type of cutter uh, opens and closes and you want it to close because it holds the metal tight therefore you can hit it a couple times without having uh, shadows of the prior hits if you've ever used one of these before you know what I'm talking about so I slide the metal in and I make sure that all the there's no like edges you know you don't want to see that you want to make sure that the metal is all the way in squarely. And then I'm going to close it down here by turning it clockwise. And that holds the metal in so you can't get it out. It's not going to move when I hammer it. We're going to be using the 7 8 punch. So the black end is the part that does not cut. This is the part that you're going to hammer on. And this is the cutting surface which has a lot of uh, uh, lubricant. You always want to use lubricant. It keeps these sharp much longer. So I've got my little uh, peppy lube and I'm going to lubricate it like so. So this is a very loud operation um, and if you want to protect your hearing these suckers and you want to give it as big a whack. I can't hear you. What'd you say? Uh, you want to give it a really hard whack if you can use either a, a big leather mallet or a steel shot filled mallet or a brass mallet but I like my rod and you want to hit it straight on you don't want to come in at an angle like this so ready get set and here we go so to remove the punch you just lift up and it slides through and there's our little disc so now we are ready to go on to forming that disc, and I'm going to get set up. Just a little quick warning, when, uh, this is not really a warning, I don't know what this is. WD-40 is not good for your steel tools. It's a corrosive oil, so don't use it on your tools. 3-in-1 oil would be a better choice, and I mention that because sometimes you need to wipe your tools down with oil, like the disc cutter or the uh, dapping block that we're going to use, so don't use WD-40. Um, okay, here's our disc, and it has, a, I know you can't feel this, can you? Um, there's a little rough edge here from the cutting. So you can either use, I, I like half rounds because they have both round and flat sides. And just, you can go around and take that off with this. For the file. Noisy arm I have today. Clank, 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 clank. And I see I'm rolling it around with my fingers. Um, and then I would go in and I'm going to roll this too. Um, this is 220 sandpaper, I think. Wait, no, I think it's 320. I have no idea what it is. It's rough. Stop! And I'm just kind of dragging the edge along here. 
to take off that burr that's on here. And that should be good enough. So now we're ready to dome. And I'm going to use the urethane that came with the Jiffy, Jiffy, <laughs> Pepe disc cutter. And I'm putting the disc in a biggish hole. Um, I'm only going to use one size dap on this, um, which is smaller than this area, but not real tiny. So I don't, I don't want to come in with something like this. Okay, I want something that more fills the hole. So I'm going to use my trusty mallet again. And give it a couple of whacks. This is 20 gauge, so it's a little harder to dome. And if I had kneeled it too, it would have been a lot easier. So that's about all I want to get on the... No, actually I might do a little more. Um, so I'm going to go kneel this and then go to the next hole here with a smaller punch. But I don't want to, I don't want to dome it too much. You can do whatever you want. You can make huge high domes if you want for your cabochons. Um, but for what I'm doing, I'm just going to dome it a little bit more. We've already done a video on this, so I'm not going to make you watch it again. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, now we're going on to the fun part. Um, I've got my disc. What we need to do with enamel, um, there's this, what is it called? Something coefficient. I, I just totally forgot. Expansion coefficient. Um, enamel is a glass and has to have certain little special things so that it doesn't crack. And what we need to do when you enamel something is you enamel both sides. Um, it's the back side is called counter enameling and you can use, especially for this project, uh, you can use any kind of, um, like if you have a pile of old scrap enamel, you can use that on the back here. But I'm gonna stick with um, just the black. I'm gonna put probably two to three coats on the back of this before I even work on the front. Uh, to help keep the top part from cracking. A um, couple tools that you'll need and supplies. Uh, this is clear fire and it's a sub, let me see if I can remember this, ethyl methyl cellulose which is I think basically like plant fiber blah 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 and uh, water. And so what you do is you mix 50% of this to 50% of water in, I use these little medicine cups because they have um, the milliliters or drams or ounces on it. So I can do you know my 50% water, 50% clear fire. So mix it together. Um, and then you need a trivet to fire on. We're going to be kiln firing. We are not doing torch firing today. So my kiln is on and I've... It's always going to be a little slightly different depending on your kiln. I found for me, I set mine at 1450. Uh, fair at night and um, for three minutes and it, it's pretty much spot on for perfect melt for me. So you have to play around with your kiln and see you know what your perfect temperature and time are together. Um, adding elements into the kiln like putting more than one piece or putting in a, a firing uh, screen that's heavy steel that'll act as a heat sink and it'll take probably a little longer the thickness of your metal will affect it the type of metal will affect it the type of enamel will affect it so it's a crap shoot so anyway we got our trivet we got our clear fire we have our little sifter this is i think 80 green grit um with with oh this is opaque enamel it's number 1996 from thompson um, with opaque enamels you don't have to wash them or separate the meshes. Um, you can just use it as is from here, which is very nice for me because I'm the not so lazy jeweler. So this piece has uh, two coats, I believe, of um, counter enamel, and I'm just going to show you how I do it. I'm sure there's 67 other ways. By the way, this this metal and my hands are free of grease. I torch cleanness as I like to call it. So I heated it with a torch and then pickled it. So I'm going to just put it in here and I'm going to paint the uh, clear fire all over the inside and around the edges. Don't worry about the edges too much on this project because the a bezel that we're going to be making um, in the next video maybe will cover those. But right now we're just going to do that. And then you come in and grab your enamel put on your mask. I hate these things. There goes my hair. 
Okay, and I grab a scoop of this, and then I, I see I'm doing it on newspaper, by the way. That's so that I can collect the overage and pour it back in. So I'm kind of trying to put an even coat. That's the deal. You don't want it real thin. I don't want to see metal through it, and you don't want it real thick. And I started on the outside first. So that's kind of okay. If I wanted to do these edges, I think I'll show you how to do that. Um, let me get set up for that. So I'll be back in a second and I can take this mask off. So I have my little world centric compostable spoon here. And I want to, I just put a little bit of the enamel in. I'm going to soak my brush and run some clear fire down the sides. And I also have a teeny brush. No, this isn't enough, I don't think. I don't know be enough. So this is if you want to um, put some on the edges. It's a wet packing, kind of, sort of. And so you kind of, you want a, the right composition of uh, clear fire and enamel. And you just go around and paint your edges like this. So if you're really into covering them all, or, you know, if you're going to do something else down the road besides make these little cabochons. So basically just do that all the way around. Um, and then what we're going to do is when we've got it all set and we're happy with the level of, which I'm not, level of enamel, enamel, <laughs> enamel we're going to put it in our trivet and put it on top of the kiln until it dries. The enamel, all the clear fire is evaporated and then I'm going to pop it in the kiln. So we will show you that in a second. So we don't want to get in there because it's 1450 degrees so we don't really want to put our head or our arm in and I have done this without a glove and it hurts. And I found also found these gigantic tweezers. I don't know if I use them for my brows or my fur on my lip but definitely good for reaching into the kiln. So I had my um, thingy, my disc up here on top, so I'm going to, it's still kind of wobbly. Okay, we're going to put it in the kiln, which is flaming hot, in the center. Shut it. I've got my timer preset for three minutes. Set the timer. If you forget to set the timer, you will forget about your enamel, and if you forget about your enamel, it will be toasted. <clears throat> so, set your timer. Okay, we're going to come back in three minutes. Okay, the alarm is going off. Ah! Grab it out. Now I have already prepared a surface over here for putting it on. These are fire bricks. And I don't know why I put the metal on there. I just did. So, what we're going to do the next is we're going to paint it again with the clear fire. Sift another coat of enamel, black enamel on it maybe two, three times, and fire it um, in between, of course. I'm going to put this in the pickle when it cools down to take all this fire scale off of it. You can see it all over there. So that uh, will clean up the metal, and then we'll be ready to um, do the other side. So we're going to do that in a minute. So uh, we've gotten the um, disc has been enameled. I didn't show you again because it's redundant. I painted the outside of the dome, did three, two layers of black um, on the top side. So what I end up with is this thing that looks like a button that's enameled on both the back and the front. Um, and what I'm going to do now is add some kind of pattern onto the front. I'm using a cobalt blue and uh, what the heck is this? Sapphire. Sapphire is, do I have a number here? 1425 and the cobalt is, I think it's 1693. So, um, I, and it's the same mixing technique. The only difference with doing the this part is, since I'm using two different colored enamels, I'll need to rinse my brush off between applications so I have a little thing with water in it. Um, and two spoons instead of one. Whew. So I'm going to mix it up. Actually, I wanted to start with the other color. Oh, and a little piece of paper towel to wipe your brush off. So, um, the powder that we're using here is actually 
ground glass um, that comes in all different grit sizes, so to speak. And um, it also, this liquid that we're using is an adhesive because if I tried to just put this liquid powdered glass on top of this little button we've made, it would just roll right off. So that's what the clear fire is. This is a glue. So you can just, you know, you can have a plan pattern here. Um, another thing that you can do is make a stencil and sift the enamel. You'd have to coat your whole piece with the clear fire first. Um, and then you would put your stencil on top and sift. It's a little hard to do with a round piece, but I have no idea what I'm doing here as far as pattern. I'm just making stuff. But that's the fun part about this is that you get to do whatever the whim inspires you to do. So I'm going to use two colors here. Um, I could put the other color on top of this, but I'm going to fire this first and then add the other color. Um, it will be less uh, buried inside of this color. So it will be a brighter color if I put this fire it and then put the other color on top. This is probably going to be butt ugly. <laughs> demo pieces. I have a whole box of them and I don't think I've ever made anything out of them that merged together. Now we have a big blob. So I think that's enough excitement for that piece. I'm going to fire that, rinse my brush, and then I'm going to put some cobalt on it. Okay? I have to dry it first. Don't forget, dry it on top of the kiln. Always. Otherwise it can bubble and flake off. And then you won't have your enamel there. Okay, so now I'm going to add uh, the cobalt blue on here, and basically it's the same as before. I'm just kind of painting it over the fired surface um, that I already put down. I might want to go into here a little bit and use like a contrasting color like yellow or orange or something to make some areas pop. And you can paint this on the black and see how it looks different than it does on the lighter. It may just blend in visually, I don't know. That's the fun thing about enamels, layering the colors to see how they change. But that's a whole book, and I'm not writing a book for right now. All right, so this is my ugly <laughs> cabochon, and I'm going to throw it in the kiln after it dries, and um, I might slip some yellow or something on here while you're not looking, and we'll show you the finished product and say goodbye, okay? So I just threw a little dry orange powder on top of the wet cobalt and dried it and threw it in the kiln and this is what we got. I might add some more colors, I might not, I don't know, but I'm calling it done for the video. So that's that on our little cabochon. So a little uh, word on safety here. There are leaded enamels like this one and they make beautiful colors but they have to be handled in a very specific fashion which I'm not going into in this video. But be aware if your product has lead in it or not. They usually have these warnings on them. Um, even the ones that don't have lead in them are dangerous. This one has cadmium in it, which is not good for people. It also causes damage to unborn fetuses and can be a cancer agent by inhalation. So, you need to have an approved mask for using this product, especially when you're sifting and cleaning it. Maybe not when you're working with it wet because there's no dust in the air. And you also need to wash your hands really well afterwards. Keep your pets away from it. Notice there's no kitties in here today. Um, and let's see. Got some more stuff. Uh, don't forget to watch the ads in front of my videos, which helps support us. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit NancyLTHamilton.com for lots of information and also check us out on Facebook under Nancy Hamilton or Nancy LT Hamilton. So, thank you for coming. We'll see you for the next one and uh, many happy days of enameling to you. Have fun. Go crazy.